Hey folks, it's Alex Coulomb, and I'm very excited to be chatting with you today about MetaHuman Animator, a truly revolutionary, in my opinion, innovation from the fine folks at Epic Games. Uh, this is a machine learning based tool that is going to make your animations from even just your iPhone more incredible than you could possibly imagine. So today I just kind of want to walk through how to get started, how to set up uh, a few tips that I've picked up on, and I hope it's useful for you. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, first thing you're going to want to do is create a new project. You could use a totally empty project in 5.2. Uh, if you want to be able to play with some lighting, like what I've done here, you might want to go ahead and use the MetaHuman Lighting Sample Project. So I'm just going to go ahead and put it in a, a different location because I never like keeping my projects in my documents. I so often end up passing that 256 character limit, uh, especially as my folders increase with more and more things. Um, it will only let you create the project in 5.0, but it's easy enough to set it up for 5.2. And if we like, we can just give it a different name, uh, although this name might be a little too long. Uh, we'll see, we'll see what happens when it opens up. But yeah, we'll go ahead and switch the uh, engine version, 5.2. Something else we'll want to do over in our config folder for our project is we'll open up our default engine.ini and you're going to want to scroll down to these two hair strand CVARs related to async. These have to do with your bindings and if you don't delete those, your hair is going to do all sorts of wacky things. So save that. Now, with all that kind of set and good to go on the Unreal Engine side, we need to make sure that we have some takes recorded. So how about we go ahead and we take a look at the MetaHuman Animator app. Now with this new app, when it opens up, it's gonna ask you if you want to use Live Link Face or if you want to use the MetaHuman Animator setup. The Live Link Face option still looks a lot like what you are used to, whereas the MetaHuman Animator, the two biggest things you're gonna notice are different here are the mic in the upper left because it is now recording your audio natively, and then also the ability to go in and do a depth visualization. So just like using Live Link Face, uh, there are some basic tips for you know framing your face and making sure you're well lit. But now, because you're gonna be using the depth sensor, um, I'm using an iPhone 12 Max, by the way, here, you want that to be gray and you want uh, as little noise as possible. You know, don't be having anything in, in front of your face. <laughs> I was going to say like your hands or anything like that. And don't have anything too noisy behind you. And you should get a pretty good capture here. So the first thing we're going to do is a little bit of a calibration take. And all we need for the calibration take is to make sure that we are capturing the front of our face and then the sides. Oh, and also your teeth. So that will actually help us generate our mesh to metahuman setup, you know, before you actually needed the 3D model. Now, thanks to the depth capture here, we are gonna be able to generate our mesh to metahuman DNA essentially entirely from uh, this video, which also has the depth data. And then from there, we can pretty much go ahead and create as many other takes as we want. I'm just gonna whip through a bunch of things here that may or may not make their way um, into the project. But yeah, once we're done, will pretty much be good to go. So when the MetaHuman Lighting Project opens up, you'll see it gives you the option of what kind of studio settings you want. If you have a powerful enough computer, feel free to turn on ray tracing. It's gonna make everything look uh, delightful. And then over in the plugins, we will just wanna make sure that we have the MetaHuman plugin enabled. And then we'll give our project a little restart. And then once you've restarted, go ahead and open up your project settings and find the IMG image media section under plugins and go ahead and increase your cache here for the gigabytes, uh, the global cache size. These are just gonna help your computer handle processing the data a little bit better, particularly recommend that on a lower end computer. And then we're gonna go and I'm just gonna create a folder here to put all my MetaHuman stuff in and I'm gonna create two folders. One folder I will call identity and another folder I will call performances. And you see that we have MetaHuman Animator here and there's a whole bunch of different options. The first thing we're gonna to wanna to grab is a capture source. Now this capture source is gonna be where we get our data from whatever takes we've done. So under here, I'm gonna go ahead and grab that Live Link Face connection. This is going to allow me to take the connection between my phone and my computer and download the takes that I have recorded. So I'm gonna go ahead and find my IPv4 address on my phone, which I could do over in my network settings, or I can just look in the OSC server connection. We're not actually going to enable the OSC connection, but we can see there what our phone's IPv4 address is, and then we can open it up right here. So I've got 
0.0.6. And you're not going to see anything over in the actual live link window. But rest assured, as long as you've done this correctly and both your phone and computer are on the same network and there's no weird firewall or Internet security going on, uh, this will be a way for you to make this connection. If for any reason this doesn't work, you are also able to go ahead and take the uh, recordings directly from your phone. You can you know, grab them off your phone with a, a lightning cable uh, or use Dropbox or Google Drive or whatever method for just getting that zip file uh, over to your computer. Now, what I like about the Live Link connection is you don't have to extract anything or you know, pull anything apart. It's just going to get all the right files uh, into here automatically. But yes, that's easy enough to do manually if needed. OK, and again, we're not going to see anything uh, change here. But now what we can do is we can go over into tools and open up what's called the Capture Manager, which uh, is actually specific to the MetaHuman plugin. And you'll see that if you've got a successful live link session, that will be green. But yes, once again, just want to show that over in live link, we don't see anything over here. So don't worry about that. Uh, we've got the little green dot over in the capture sources. And here's all the takes that I have on my phone. Uh, you see there's one with the Technoprops helmet and the others are just a, a standard, um, nothing special, not even a tripod, just me holding my phone. And I certainly could have named these better, um, but I do know that uh, number five is going to be my identity take. I'm just going to grab them all for the moment and just get them into my project and kind of use them as needed. Now, oh, it's also worth mentioning that I can actually do a capture directly here. Um, I can actually do start capture and this will trigger my phone to um, actually activate a capture right now, which is kind of cool. You can imagine, especially in a remote session, uh, how useful it would be to be able to, um, you know, allow a performer to be totally hands free. And you can do this with the OSC server settings as well. But basically just to be able to trigger everything uh, on their behalf and they can just go ahead and do their performance. OK, and this is going to go ahead and import everything. OK, and then once we have all those nice green check marks, we're going to be able to go ahead and close the Capture Manager. Everything is now in our project. We can see a folder here where it all exists. Um, here's a little bit of what we have inside the folder, just a sense that there's audio and there's video. There's uh, RGB as well as depth data. And uh, we can see that there's a calibration that's already set up. We see that it came in at 30 frames a second, which is interesting right now. I have not found a way to import at 60 frames a second, even though it does record at 60 frames a second. So as I mentioned, uh, take five, I know that that one is my calibration take. So I want to keep that inside identity. I'm going to use that to actually create my uh, basically my mesh to MetaHuman. And then all the others I'm going to want to move over to performances because those are actual performances and not something just setting up the MetaHuman identity. So to do that, we'll go back down to our MetaHuman animator subcategory and we are going to create a MetaHuman identity. So I'm going to go ahead and name this MHI underscore Alex and we're going to open it right up. And at this point, it might ask you to uh, log in to your Epic Games account. You might get asked to solve, oh, you know, a CAPTCHA or a thousand. And then once you're through that, you can take a look at your options. Uh, so if you remember Mesh to MetaHuman, you could create an identity from a mesh. But now we have the ability to do it from footage. So again, my slate five, that is going to be my identity capture where I have my calibration data. If we scrub through this, we'll see me looking forward, left, right. And at the end, we'll get a little bit of my teeth. And down here, just noting that there is already actually a skeletal mesh asset set up for me. It just hasn't been molded to my face yet. That's going to come through going through the whole ribbon up top and uh, connecting everything. So the first thing we'll do is promote a frame here with this little plus, and that will be the front view. You can say not to bother showing that again. The first plus will always be the front view. We can zoom in and make sure that this is about right for my uh, cheek lines, my lips, my eyes, my eyebrows, my giant fluffy eyebrows, uh, very easy to identify here. And then we can go and free up the camera right there, free roaming camera, and we'll just scrub through. And now we're going to find where I rotate just a little bit. We still want to make sure that we can identify the uh, the mouth, both eyes, both eyebrows. And so that's a pretty good spot. And I'll promote that frame. And again, we'll just zoom in for a second to make sure that it looks like what we want it to. And then we will go ahead and free up the camera. And now we're going to go find the view from the other side. Uh, by the way, you can do left and right in any order. It's really just that first frame that's important to have be front. 
But once again, we're just making sure that the pupils, the eyes, the eyebrows, all of this looks good. You can go ahead and adjust those points, just like when you're using Mesh to MetaHuman until it looks good. And then what we can do now is we can click on the neutral pose. And as long as we're happy with these three angles and information available, we can go ahead and click on MetaHuman Identity Solve. And once that happens, you'll see that the mesh is now tailor made to me. It's basically my face, not bad at all. And I can even snap to those different camera points and start to drag this around and get some different views. But I'm really proud of my nose there. It captured that real well. Then over in that mesh to metahuman option, we can do either uh, uh, just a skeletal mesh that we'll have here locally or actually upload it to the cloud to customize more in mesh to metahuman if that is what we want to do right now. Anyways, the next step, funny that it happens after, but we now want to do that teeth pose. So we'll go add and do the teeth pose. And then we'll just scrub through here and find that moment where we open our mouth nice and big, show all of our teeth. And then we're gonna go click on plus to promote that frame. And then once we confirm that that's a good outline of our lips and teeth and whatnot, we'll say fit teeth and it will finalize the metahuman identity. And if we'd like, we could start to take a look at some of our other data. We could have done this at any point, but the depth mesh, for example. And now we're ready to prepare our MetaHuman for performance, exactly what it sounds like. Also note that if you are not working on a computer that has 64 gigabytes of memory, uh, you will get shamed a little bit at this point by Unreal Engine, but it's okay. It still will take care of you and process just at a slightly slower speed. All right, and I think we'll end part one of the video here. We have successfully created our first MetaHuman identity, and now we are going to be able to take any number of captures we've done using MetaHuman Animator and get it to work well, not only with our MetaHuman identity set up to be this uh, very nice mesh that is based on our own face, but then we can also transfer this data to any number of other MetaHumans as well.